CourageousRadio.com. We have a lot of information there for you, an entrepreneur help center and some resources. Uh, but, you know, one of the best parts about it is uh, that you just get to see the behind the scenes and uh, in between commercials and, you know, so forth. Uh, we'll have a good time. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook at Courageous Media. Just search at Courageous Media uh, or send us questions at CourageousRadio.com as well. Uh, also, if you're ever in the Orlando, Florida area, we'd love to have you as part of our uh, in-studio audience. So reach out to us as well, office at CourageousExperience.com. Let us know and we'll get you added and make sure that um, that we get you scheduled on, uh, on a day that we have, have space. So, all right, now for my take on this week's top business news. First of all, GM cut 14,000 jobs. They have uh, shut down seven factories. And, um, uh, you know, part of it, and we've talked about it extensively, they cannot compete in an electric car world. And I've said extensively that, um, that, that, that the future of automobiles is not automobiles. Uh, the future of automobile manufacturing is technology companies and software companies. And nothing has been truer than, you know, obviously getting back from China and seeing how advanced they are with their AI, how, how advanced they are with robotics. I mean, it is unbelievable. And, and it's second nature. So if we saw uh, things that are extremely automated here, we would kind of pause or be like, oh, that's kind of like Star Trek-ish or something. But over there, it's very, very common. Now, there's obviously a massive disconnect because many of, uh, of the common uh, folk are not, uh, do not have access to that type of technology yet, but a lot of it is being automated and, and very cost effective. Uh, but you know, the re the problem with GM ultimately is not even the products. The problem uh, is not even as much uh, with their, uh, their, their, uh, pro their service. The problem with GM is the $15 billion in debt that they have. That's what's killing them. Uh, and, and they don't have an answer for it. Uh, so they're and, and part of it is that, that, you know, their unionized models are completely out of date. And on that point, and I don't, uh, unless you call in and want me to go deep on unions, uh, that, that is what's hurting, one of the big things that's hurting GM. And ironically, Amazon, uh, they are, of course, their second camp headquarters in uh, New York uh, or D.C., uh, but they're hiring a lot of people from New York. And uh, they're already uh, forming, uh, you know, exploratory committees for, for unionizing that for that for that campus. And uh, I, I'm telling you, it never play. It's not going to play out the way they want it to. It's kind of like people who win the battle but lose the war. Uh, you may get what you want, but it's going to hurt you in the long run. And another rabbit, since I'm just ch kind of chasing them at the moment, uh, that the um, uh, whenever, uh, you know, Wall Street announced last week that uh, they no longer wanted their their men to have dinners with females. They did not want uh, the men to uh, stay in the on the same floor in hotels as their female counterparts. Uh, no, so no more dinners, no more meals, no more uh, traveling together. If you're, you know, try to take separate flights and definitely don't sit together on a flight. Uh, you know, just literally go to the extremes in order to avoid the appearance of wrongdoing. Uh, so because when it's expedient, sometimes it can kind of come up. Uh, and, and there's no, it's he said she said there's no one to dispute it. And uh, so no, regardless, uh, companies can't even take that. Uh, they can't take on that risk. And so Wall Street is saying, look, stay away completely. Uh, stay away completely. And the problem is that it's kind of like, uh, fine, if you're going to if you're going to if there's going to be an accusation one way or the other, male against female or female against male, uh, where we where no one was there and we don't really know what happened and we don't know who to believe. Uh, you know, the victim or the vic uh, or, or the or the person, uh, you know, doing the, the, the misdeed or what was it consensual at the time and all and it's not consensual now. Uh, you know, whatever the issue is, we we just aren't there. We don't know uh, oftentimes. And so they're saying, look, just stay away because we don't want that risk. Well, that sounds good, except for the fact that this just that sets women back tremendously in the workplace. I, I mean, a lot of business is done over lunch. A lot of business is done at dinners. A lot of business is done on a plane. Just, you know, when you got a couple hours and you're not stressed out and you're just, you, you know, you're just, you're, you're, you're going to where you need to go. And yeah, you know, th there's a lot of conversation that happens that builds relationship, that builds trust. Uh, and that's what, how business is done. So, uh, they, they, they won a battle, but they've lost a war, which th reduces your ability for promotions, which obviously reduces your income, uh, your ability for increases and raises. And, and, and it just it, it's a difficult situation. So anyway, when you start dealing with unionizing, when you start dealing with some of these other things, you can 
you can, well, my mentor early on told me you can be right or rich, usually not both. And so at some point you have to decide what it's worth to you to move forward and what, what cross you're going to bear and what hill you're willing to die on. And uh, if it's, if it's over a specific value, then, then, then so be it. If it's over a performance and income and results, then, then that's a different approach. So, and there's a right way of doing all of it. It's not the, the pendulum the problem here is the pendulum swung all the way to the other side. There is a happy medium. It's not don't ever talk to a female or don't ever talk to a male uh, so you don't get accused. It is it is be appropriate and never have the appearance. And even if someone ever did uh, make an accusation, you have so many years of, of doing right and knowing that pe people knowing that you would never put yourself in a position like that, that at least it warrants more scrutiny. Uh, so I don't think this is a male or female issue. I think this is a, um, a, a humanity issue. Uh, but anyway, back to GM investors are happy about this because, uh, you know, they know that GM can't compete in an electric and a self-driving car era because of their protectionism old way, uh, 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 ways, but the board of directors and the companies, uh, like that, that, you know, they, they won't hire CEOs, uh, <laughs> like me or the tech CEOs to really take them into the future because it's just, it's too risky. Uh, just, you know, the main people who oppose progress are governments, um, and, uh, and, and, and large companies. Uh, those are the ones that have a lot of protectionism, uh, in there. They fight to protect what they have thinking that the new, new body styles or the new way, uh, approaching things, uh, into the market is enough, but you can't just tweak whenever things are fundamentally changing and as rapidly as they're changing, uh, you must fundamentally change the business model. And uh, most board members just don't get that. But Victoria's Secret CEO resigned and has already been replaced in the last couple of weeks. And uh, that's because of the CMO making some degrading remarks that were just really simply indi uh, indicative of the culture. And the problem, the culture is always set by a CEO uh, if they're the right kind of leader. Uh, and if they're not, well, and if it's not set by the CEO, then there's not the right kind of leader anyway. So they should be setting the culture and the tone and the tenor of an organization. And that's not acceptable behavior. Uh, so they made that change. But I will tell you this, uh, they, they ousted a female CEO and put in a male CEO. And I want to just congratulate them on that because most boards do get that part wrong. They think, oh, uh, we need to hire another female or we need to hire another male. This is not a gender issue. It is a being responsible issue, being appropriate issue, not making any appropriate comments about males or females. And uh, it really is, is just goes back to the personal values of the CEO. And that's why it's so important. Character matters in the C-suite, uh, not just results. In fact, results will come if the character is there. Uh, also, the direct selling company LuLuRoe is facing mounting debt over $2.3 billion in sales uh, last year, but they are struggling. There's a, a lot of a mass exodus, as a matter of fact. And, uh, uh, you know, so there's a lot of a lot of layoffs. And uh, and so I appear it appears that they're imploding uh, the, the Huawei CFO. I'll talk about that in a little bit. USA Gymnastics filed bankruptcy last week. You've been watching what happened with uh, Larry Nasser and the uh, abuse there. Uh, but but that organization is in uh, tremendous chaos. Uh, and then the CEO turnover uh, ends is on the rise in America. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, we reached a, a 10 year high. For CEO turnover, most CEOs only last 18 to 24 months in a job. That's why they get paid so much, because they're going to be unemployed for the next two years. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts. I'll be right back after this word from my sponsors. One, well, we're, uh, we're on a commercial break, so I'm going to visit with you all for a little bit on our uh, live stream. Uh, live audience and uh, what's that? Three minutes. All right. And so we've got um, a few th a few more things I wanted to get through, but there's just so much that's happened, and I'm, I want to go deep on a few of the issues. So if you are interested in uh, like the Huawei situation uh, with where where the U.S. Department of Justice asked Canada to arrest her. I mean, while she was in Canada, she lives in Beijing, China. Her father, and she's the CFO of the company, but her father started uh, the largest, tele probably the largest telecommunications company in the world. Uh, they're in the top 20 largest companies. And so uh, in the world, uh, so, it, and they are like royalty in China. So it'd be like arresting, you know, Prince Harry when he goes to Vegas or something. Uh, it, it's, it's a, it's a national crisis, an international crisis. And, um, and so, you know, 
this happened two days before I left Shanghai. And uh, a former diplomat from the White House was with me those two days. And, uh, you know, we knew we were visiting over breakfast uh, in the executive lounge and we knew we had, uh, you know, about 24 hours to get out of the country or, you know, we could be bait here. We could be they could hold us. And sure enough, it's exactly what China did. Uh, but they uh, they arrested a former uh, a Canadian diplomat and then they just detained a second uh, executive yesterday. So it's uh, it is dicey, to say the least, uh, when you're playing in that kind of a high stakes game. Uh, you have to know what you're dealing with and what you're getting into. So. All right, we're going live in just a moment. Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts. I'm taking your calls live every Thursday at noon Eastern, 407-916-5400. 407-916-5400. If you have any questions, comments, or you want to just tell me about your business, your product, or your idea, and uh, how to get it off the ground, where to go, uh, give me a call. Uh, I want to uh, co- revert back to uh, what's happening in China right now on the, in the international uh, crisis, really, with Ming. And I want you to understand, because sometimes just in a passing uh, headline, you don't understand the ramifications. Uh, Ming is the, the CFO of Huawei, and Huawei is one of the largest companies in the entire world, okay? So uh, they, and she's not just the CFO, her dad's the founder <laughs> and, this, and CEO, okay? So this is family and business. And, the, uh, and they are Chinese royalty. All right. So when the United States had the Department of Justice had Canada arrest Ming when she got to Vancouver, passing through Vancouver, as a matter of fact, arrested her uh, at the request of the of of the U.S. government. And this happened two days before uh, I left China. I was still I had gone from Beijing to Shanghai and uh, I was keynoting Bloomberg's Business Week conference that day. A former diplomat from uh, from the White House was with me. He had flown in the night before. We were having breakfast that morning. Uh, that that this all happened, and he said, "You know what happened an hour ago?" And I'm like, "I said no." And he told me about the uh, about Ming and and what happened. And of course, we're you know we're thinking you know we we've got uh, you know a good 24 hours to get out of here, and uh, but before we're used as bait and pawns in this game. And you know, sure enough, that's what's happened. They arrested a Canadian. Uh, former diplomat on Monday. And by the way, they do former because it's not as bad as uh, an existing, but it's still bad. They're sending a strong, strong message. Uh, and so that happened on on Monday. And then, of course, yesterday, uh, a second one. And um, and so, yeah, I love my live stream audience. You know, I'm glad you didn't see me on Locked Up Abroad as well. Um, uh, although uh, it sure would be, uh, it was just an unbelievable trip anyway. You know, being in Beijing was surreal. Being in Tiananmen Square was surreal. Uh, speaking at the Great Hall of the People, something that, uh, th- you know, this U.S. president uh, ha- is not invited or welcome to do or, or, or be there. And uh, it was just a phenomenal experience. Uh, I remember the last, the last, um, it wasn't the last day I was in Beijing, but uh, after about four days in, see, I had like two hours from the moment I landed before I had to speak at a state dinner there. And, and then, but a few days in, I was exhausted. I had been going nonstop. Obviously, it's like a day ahead there. And so my body clock was just all messed up. You know, my circadian rhythm was off and everything. And I'd slept about three hours a night. 
And so I was, and then all the speaking that I did, I was just exhausted in the dinners that lasted for hours. Uh, but that Sunday morning, there was a diplomatic roundtable, and uh, I, I didn't know that. And I thought they had, they told me they needed me to go do a, a, a photo op. So um, I went. Uh, I did not wear a tie for the first time since I had stepped off the plane, and uh, went to this photo op. And and they and it was for the diplomatic roundtable, and they had my placard made, and you know my my stuff sitting there, my tea, my water, everything that that they do, uh, my translation device. And uh, so I had three minutes to get ready to, to, to make some remarks to these world leaders. I mean, there are 15 plus countries represented. Uh, you got the ambassador to Jordan and he's a personal, uh, the head of affairs for the King of Jordan. And you got Ethiopia right there and you've got Asia, you got Hong Kong, you got Singapore, you got Indonesia, you got India. I mean, and then a lot of people, a lot of the dignitaries from China and the ambassadors to those countries uh, in the room. And so he, everyone went around and gave, you know, some opening remarks and mine are on YouTube uh, if you want to check it out. But um, uh, it, it was uh, it was an incredible experience. And, and one of the things that, uh, of course, I, I talked about was the U.S.-China trade war, but really emphasized having the right spirit in all of these things. And whenever one side uh, starts to do things like arresting business executives abroad, uh, it is a dangerous, very sensitive, like you should use that extremely selectively because can you imagine if U.S. executives uh, started getting uh, detained abroad? I mean, it would be, it would cause an uproar in the United States, uh, but more, it would have such an impact on business uh, because so much of business is international and global. So it, it's just to understand the impact of this Huawei CFO thing, it's a lot bigger than what you probably recognize or understand. One of the things I found really interesting though was when I was at the Forbidden City, and you know the Great Wall of China was 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 phenomenal, but um, uh, and, and Tiananmen Square. But seeing the Forbidden City, the Imperial Garden, uh, one of the fascinating things to me about the forgot uh, the Forbidden City is that there are it's an actual city, <laughs> and uh, thousands of people live there. But for, it was for the emperors, and for the last eight hundred years with the Ming dynasties and the Qing dynasties, you've got to pass through these different buildings, the uh, huts, in order to get to the throne. Uh, and then he had two thrones, but one of the halls that really, you know, I thought was incredible was called basically the attitude hall, the attitude pavilion, the attitude, uh, place. And before the emperor was allowed to go into the throne room, he would go in there and change and shower and freshen up. Uh, and really it was to adjust his attitude to get him ready to take care of business. And, you know, that's something as old as the ages, as we see, they built entire, entire buildings to get your attitude right. And I think most companies start need, uh, need to start having like an attitude hall, an attitude entrance where, you know, check your attitude as you're coming in the door. Check, make sure you're in the right spirit, the right frame of mind, a productive, uh, a cleansed mind, a healed mind. And let's, you know, let's let's uh, follow the purpose uh, that we're here to to do as a company. So anyway, uh, you are invited. They invited me to bring uh, uh, authorize me to bring 15 institutions back with me March 19th through the 26th. So if you're interested in going to China, uh, I can get you there uh, as part of this China delegation. Uh, you can go to CourageousGlobal.com. CourageousGlobal.com has a lot of all of the information that you need there. Uh, but it's March 19th through the 26th. Um, I'll arrange the meetings that you need with uh, Chinese government officials or with business leaders. But if you are an educational institution, primarily K through 12 or universities, I definitely want you there. You're the main ones I want there. Um, and then five or six entrepreneurs, CEOs, companies either want to do business there or you uh, want to bring some business back or how, however it wants to go. But I promise you deals will get done. Um, contracts will get signed while you're there. Uh, you definitely want to be a part of that. So that China delegation, once again, is uh, March 19th through the 26th. And you can get uh, the, the all-inclusive price, includes uh, airfare and everything else um, at CourageousGlobal.com. But I'd love to have you there. We're going to go to the Great Wall of China, the Forbidden City, Imperial Gardens, uh, we, we, we'll go do uh, do all the sightseeing and so forth. I want to thank my sponsors again, New York Life, Nick uh, McCarthy. Make sure you check him out. Click on the link on CourageousRadio.com or CourageousGlobal.com. You'll see New York Life. Click on that and you'll find out who is giving me the advice and financial and insurance and so on and so forth. Uh, you'll want to meet with him, ha at least have a phone call with him. Uh, Tom Coast Tavern, I'm there every Thursday night and several times during the week uh, in Orlando, Florida. Would love to see you there. Achieve wellness and win experiences. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts. I'll be right back with the business hot list, hit list, 
and this week's business and losers in just a moment. All right, good segment. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, hear, hearing the, the recap there. I will tell you that, uh, once again, the main thing, you know, China's known for the manufacturing, made in China. And you know, that's not an accident. They, even while I was there, they wanted to, all they talked about was uh, that they wanted to manufacture everything in the world. Like they don't ever want to see something made anywhere but China, period. They want to own it and dominate it all completely. So they haven't completely fulfilled that, obviously, and they aren't going to, they, they don't want to stop until they do. One of the interesting things that whenever uh, my driver was taking me uh, somewhere, I saw a manufacturing innovation center. I took a picture of it and I thought, you know, I've never seen one of these in the United States and we want to cry all day long about why we don't have manufacturing jobs and we need this and we need that. I'm telling you right now, we can't, we don't even come close to being near as hungry as those people are about getting better. We just want more, but we don't want to get better. And so I thought that was so impressive because at least they're getting better at their craft. Now, I will say this, what America has done with manufacturing is it's gone more high tech. And I love that. But I'm telling you, they are close on our heels with this high tech manufacturing. China's coming after, they're, they're targeting high tech manufacturing. And so if you want to, uh, to really get ahead of that, uh, and, and it's not just the high-tech manufacturing, they are so far advanced on the AI and the robotics. They are consumed. It consumes them. They're, they're, they're billionaires and the government, which, you know, they, they're very closely related. They are consumed with robotics and AI. Uh, the Mercedes that they, uh, that, that Maybach, uh, that, that, they gave us for the, uh, the the driver had and for Bloomberg while I was there, uh, you know, the, the seats recline in the back. And I mean, it's unbelievable experience, but they have these self-driving intuitive cars uh, that, that the, the technology is just out of this Wait world. So uh, anyway, I, I hope that um, I hope we get better. That's what has to happen. We have to, they are hungry. And a lot of the, um, a lot of people in the United States, except for the entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurs, uh, you know, they've got a dream and a vision, but what most of them don't have is the work ethic. What most of them don't have is the ability to execute. What most of them have is the ability to see something through to the end. And that's what it takes. That's the key to success. So we're, uh, we're going live here in just a moment. Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts. I'm taking your calls live every Thursday at noon Eastern, 407-916-5400, 407-916-5400. If you got a question, starting a business, want to grow a business, give me a call. Love to talk uh, about uh, about what you're doing and what you're trying to do. Uh, so one of the things, I this time now for my hot list, hit list, this is where I, I praise companies for what they're doing right, and it's where I rip them apart for what they're doing wrong and the ones that are just, uh, you know, missing the missing the boat entirely. So uh, first of all, my hot list. These are the ones that are doing a great job. Oxbridge International Group. Oxbridge is a it, it is a company. Uh, they're they're one of the, one of the largest in their category. Uh, but what they do is facilitate uh, the Chinese elite students or elite families, stu uh, children from elite families, uh, to study abroad. But what they've done is they've opened it up to so many different people where that would normally not have access to uh, education abroad. So what they do is uh, they have educational symposiums. They're so large, they have them every other month. Uh, they have six of them a year. I, uh, I went to one uh, to observe, uh, and when he was given the tour, it was just phenomenal. I'm telling you, there's probably uh, a couple thousand students or potential you know, students uh, that were there, and they just have, uh, they, plus he, he's got a little over a thousand staff that handles just that. Now they also bought Diamond Valley uh, out in uh, in, in uh, California, outside of Irvine and Riverside. There, they, it's got a golf course on it now, but it's 400 acres. Uh, they are just building a, an absolutely stunning uh, resort and, and and community there. Uh, also, uh, but what they do is they partner with uh, American institutions 
to have their uh, students come over and they pay a premium. They, you know, obviously it's normal room and board, but they want them starting at K through 12. Can you imagine? Uh, because that's how much they value uh, the uh, the education over here. And, you know, part of the deal is because because this is just kind of uh, one of the challenges. And, and when I was at the diplomatic roundtable and I was looking down through what the agenda was because I didn't even know I was supposed to be there, uh, I'm looking down through the agenda. What are we talking about? And the very last thing after our initial opening remarks w- uh, during the Q&A, we were supposed to discuss free speech. Well, A, I don't want to discuss... <laughs> You know, I mean, this is the courageous entrepreneur radio show, not the scared uh, show. But, uh, you know, that's a little nerve wracking when you're in in Tiananmen Square uh, debating free speech and you're the only American uh, in in the city. Uh, And and there's happens to be a U.S. China trade war and there's this and that. And we understand how they like to play. So I didn't really want to be discussing that topic, but um, we actually did not get to free speech. But what we did talk about was empowering people and and they the, one of the reasons why communism does not want to empower people is because that gives them a sense of control the more you empower somebody the more you give and give them power but it's their power anyway you don't have to i can still be empowered and have power without taking from you but that's that's an Americanized way of viewing it. It's actually a, a, human, a humane way of viewing it. But communism does not view it that way. In order for me to have power over you, you can't have power. So if I, ha- if you, if I empower you, then you might start thinking that you're entitled to more or that you, are, uh, that you, should, you get discontent with what you have and so you want us to give it to you. And, uh, or you start trying to have a revolt or overthrow. And so... Uh, that's what they're trying to protect and prevent. But I can tell you that uh, Oxbridge and, and, and uh, this freedom of thought to, to train in the West, and uh, it's not like they then, you know, a lot of them go back and they want to use those talents and skills to, uh, to better the uh, economy uh, and their family. But, uh, but there are agreements that are made to where they can't enter politics and other such things, like you, you can't, you know, vote or be a part of that process. Uh, any kind of political process, uh, if you do that. Uh, and so they take away your power in exchange for you growing economically. And it's very interesting that they've separated the economics and the politics. Uh, but you know I, you know what blew my mind the most, Tom, was they really thought that they were extremely free. And of course, here, everyone talks about the horrible human rights record and, and so forth of China. And they did stop the one-child policy uh, and, and some other things in the, in the recent past. But uh, they, they, the reason they believe that they're so free is because of the freedom in 1949. And, uh, you know, when the, and really it started a, a couple of decades earlier, but 1949 is when they were able to, uh, to, to be, quote, free. And so it's, it's a whole new phenomenon for them. It's almost like, I feel like it's being, like being in America a couple hundred years ago or something, the excitement, the, the early days. And that's really what they're still in. So they have zero desire, even the people, do not feel oppressed. They don't, in fact, they feel extremely free. Uh, so it, it's just a different expectation. And of course, you can imagine after me spending three weeks over there, what it was like landing back in the United States of entitlement. I mean, United States of America. So it was uh, it was quite interesting. But Oxbridge, hats off to the incredible thing you're doing and how you're doing it. It was a very impressive operation. Had a great time with you. Sinai PR, they were my agency uh, that uh, stayed with me. They uh, provided the interpreter. Ada was amazing. I'm actually, she'll be on our show here. Uh, at some point next year. And, uh, and and so there's just so many different stories and people that will, uh, you'll get to meet. But they were in charge of not losing me. <laughs> they were in charge of me not causing any in- international incidents. And uh, they just did a great job uh, all the way through. I thought it was kind of humorous whenever uh, halfway through one of the segments, uh, I, was, I, had a, I hadn't spoken yet at this particular event. And uh, this was back in Tiananmen Square. It was the third speech, and, and it was to government and the leading entrepreneurs in the, in the nation. And, um, and there was this guy, you know, I, I did not have a translation device that day. And so he was just going off and he was super passionate. And, uh, you know, I was used to it by that point. Cause I'd been listening to, to this for like six hours between different events. And, and so I'm just in my own little, in my own mind and, and own little world. And, and my interpreter, Ada leads over and she said, uh, 
So he's saying that we should squash America uh, in this U.S.-China trade war and that uh, we should not be intimidated and that we should go head to head and that we should not back down. And we should not. And uh, and and I saw the, the fury with which this guy was was speaking. And I, I was like, I, I just I raised my hand a little bit. And this was mainly just for her. But I was like, uh, hello, American in the house. <laughs> I'm right here, you know, uh, or, or can you just let me know before you do that? I'd like, I've got a flight to catch, you know, <laughs> any of the above. Uh, but, but no, I just kind of chuckled and I'm like, well, I'm on here in about 30 minutes and we'll see how that goes. Uh, so, uh, but it goes to exactly what I was talking about with having the right spirit. So anyway, they did a great job. Uh, there, they, uh, she was actually with the, the, the CCTV, the state TV, and Bloomberg prior to uh, becoming a partner in the uh, PR firm that she is involved in. But she's got the relationships at the, obviously the Chinese state TV, uh, the uh, just at the highest levels of business and government. Uh, and, uh, you know, one, one of the, the, the folks that were in, from uh, came over from the Hong Kong government and, uh, and they, they, you know, they take seating arrangements very seriously there, whether it's uh, uh in your at, at meals in the conferences, and uh, and so the head of Oppenheimer Funds, I got to uh, visit with him over dinner, uh, and then but anyway, this lady from Hong Kong, uh, one one of the uh, political elites there, uh, dignitaries, uh, uh, sat next to me uh, during the uh, the Bloomberg luncheon, and so we've been able to continue a, a great relationship and have some things there with Hong Kong, have some things uh, in the works with Jordan, Ethiopia, Kenya, and uh, and so of course uh, China is still. On the radar. On my hit list. My hit list. All right. Didi. Now, that whenever I first got to China, I, I said, uh, I was, you know, you start using hand gestures a lot because nobody knows what you're saying. And, uh, I, and I was like, Didi, Didi. And uh, then finally somebody was like, oh, Didi. And it's spelled D-I-D-I. So I was like, Didi. Nah, it's Didi. Anyway, the, Didi, uh, first of all, Uber entered China years ago. It was a bust, okay? They loved it, loved it. But Uber could not figure out how to do business in China. And it's extremely difficult. You cannot even imagine how hard it is for, for an American, any company to do business, a non-Chinese company to do business in China. Well, they they didn't win. And they ended up selling uh, and moving it over to, to Didi. So Didi is the Uber of China. Well, I had massive issues like two or three days in and, uh, and my card wouldn't work uh, on that app. So it was like, how am I going to, uh, whenever I want to uh, sneak away, how do I do this? You know, um, and the, and so that wasn't possible. And whenever I needed uh, them, they were they, they they could not get the problem resolved. And just so you know, I still haven't heard back from them. So you know, a couple weeks later, uh, just that, that the Chinese have not figured out how to have customer service just yet. But I want to thank another one of my sponsors, Win Experiences. They're based in Jacksonville, Florida. They help companies. Uh, provide exclusive, amazing experiences, white glove, high class, the Masters, uh, Final Four, Kentucky Derby, you name it. They provide elite experiences for them. Check them out at Win W-Y-N, not W-I-N, W-Y-N, experiences.com. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts. When I come back, it is time for the boardroom battles. All right. Hope you're enjoying today's show. We've got one segment left. It's going to be the boardroom battles. And um, I've got uh, to, hello to all the people, by the way, that are watching and have tuned in. And, and every now and then it shows me who. And so I'm really excited uh, to see some of you. And then also those who have given me your greetings. I really appreciate that. And uh, it's so good to hear from you. And it's good to be back. It's good to be home. And, and so um, very, very thrilled. I appreciate you. Brad, hope to see you uh, at one of these. Two minutes.
Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts, taking your calls live every Thursday at noon Eastern time, 407-916-5400. So regardless of when it airs in your market, give me a call. Call 407-916-5400 uh, Thursdays at noon Eastern. And it's time now for the boardroom battles. This is where the gloves come off, all right? This is where uh, we just talk brass. And, you know, part the, how this whole thing started was whenever I was CEO of the hoverboard company and uh, we're dealing with the fires, we're dealing with over 300 Chinese manufacturers knocking it off, which I brought up uh, <laughs> while I was there. And uh, and I told you know what I told them? I'm just going to take another rabbit trail. What I told them was, you do not need to knock off our stuff. You are brilliant enough on your own. Go create something. Innovate. Be creative. Be original. Stop trying to copy. You're always behind if you do that. If you want to lead, like you're chanting in ma your mantra, then do something original. Stop making us fight over IP uh, you know, protection. Why don't you have a higher thought? Take whatever we've learned and whatever we're doing and elevate that. And uh, that's that's how you're going to win. Anyway, uh, one of the things that, uh, that 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 I wanted. So so while I was CEO of the hoverboard company, we were dealing with these issues, and there was they got so severe we ended up going into a conference room, which was by the front entrance, uh, by the by the waiting room, and uh, it was so brutal. We were there in there for three days, and. But at the end of the first day, it was nine or ten o'clock at night when we when we left, and the uh, the by the, when we came in the next day, uh, the the team and the receptionist they had asked me that night, but they ended up moving the conference room because they said there it it, it uh, looked like there we caused some concern <laughs> on some of the people who were waiting. You know, and these were we were hiring so fast, and so these were people looking to be hired and you know worked there, and then we were scaring them to death. Uh, but you know, it was a high growth time, a lot going on, very passionate. Uh, very passionate exchanges. Uh, so anyway, here's the company for this week's boardroom battle. And that's what I wanted to do was give you an inside peek on what happens in boardrooms. You think it's about what makes sense from a product perspective, what makes sense from a pricing perspective. And you're walking through the aisles at Walmart and Target room. It doesn't have very much to do with what's common sense or with a lot of those things. Uh, unfortunately, when you are in the boardroom, the other part of it is a lot of times there's financing issues that are driving these or debt issues that are driving these, and they are uh, uh, strapped as to what kind of decisions they can make, and they can't make the right decisions. They have to make the best decision with the set of circumstances that they have, which are usually not known to you, the consumer, or us, the public. So anyway, there is one company, though, that is in trouble, and it is Facebook. Facebook. You know, Zuckerberg you know, needs to go as CEO. There's just no doubt about it. And I don't I don't think that's uh, a newsflash to too many people, uh, maybe to him. But uh, this is not an ego thing, buddy. All right. You, you look, Mark, you, you, you don't have to keep hanging on. You already built it. Um, you are out of your league. It, it's kind of the founder, the founder quandary. If you even in NBA school, they teach they talk about this, the founder predicament. And it's where, you know, a, a founder has in order and that's what's happened, but they usually stay on too long. Uh, they, they don't have the, they have the vision. They have the ability to execute in a startup mode, but they don't have the steady hand or the discipline or the wisdom usually, uh, because what makes a good founder does not usually make a good CEO. You, a CEO, you need wisdom. A CEO, you need a steady hand. A CEO, you need uh, someone who is uh, has good judgment and discernment. And a lot of entrepreneurs, what makes a good it's risky and 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 you don't know how it's going to turn out and you know things like that. But the, the the founder issue is is a real thing in companies and Facebook is experiencing it like never before right now. Uh, that's one of the reasons why they brought in Sheryl Sandberg, a CEO, a few years ago. And uh, she was supposed to be the savior, but but uh, of, of Facebook. And it in the re last couple of weeks, it is evident she is so far. Uh, let's see here. How do I want to say this? Uh, she does not have control of the ship. Let's put it that way. She's either out of her league, or she's not able to, or she's uh, handcuffed as to what she's able to do. She, but either way, it results in one thing, and it is you being ineffective. So. Uh, it may not be that you're ineffective. It may be you're not allowed to do the things that you want, but that might be because of the, the, the founder uh, quandary in the first place. So 
whatever the issue are, issues are, uh, they're big, they are deep. One of the, the things, though, that happened, uh, Facebook announced the dismantling of their war room. Their war room uh, was, was put together to, for this last election, the 2016 election, uh, and really into 20, the 2018. It was after the 2016 and the, the uh, concern over Russia's influence on the election and so forth that they put this together. And so the, the, the purpose of the war room was to streamline communication inside of Facebook and monitor mass amounts of information for misinformation. Because information is the war. It is the war today, is information. So there's information, there's misinformation, there's misinformation to the misinformation, and, uh, and counter-information to that. And so that is the war, because if you can change someone's mind, you know, it's the whole power of the pen thing, and you control an entire nation, but, oh, and it only takes one person's pen uh, to do that. And so uh, that's what they focused on. The war room was to try to sort through that. But Facebook isn't a, it, I mean, that's a tough role, because what's, uh, because there's not, a universal basis of truth that people will go on. I believe there's a universal basis of truth um, that's found in Scripture for me. Uh, that's what I have based my life on. Um, so to me, there is a very flat baseline that from which and a, and a foundation of truth on which everything else is either measured, whether it's true or false. But to people, everything is uh, everything is open to interpretation. Everything is open to feelings. Everything is open to what is your truth. See, well, that's subjective. So if I'm Facebook and truth to most people is subjective, what are you monitoring? What you call misinformation is my truth. I mean, it is a it is an incredible challenge uh, that they have. And, and if it's true, it may be true for America. But if the Russians are the ones with a Facebook account that are that are the the, the that put out these ads, then they can choose to censor that. But, but is that censoring a, an element of truth? Yes or no? It, but the bottom line is, think. Of, let's re go in reverse here. This is a kid that decided to build a website to rate women's looks in college. All right, that's the extent of his brand width when it comes to to uh, business, and um, and, and it's turned into some other things. Uh, and they've capitalized on it, but it is a it is a disaster right now. And uh, and and the the information misinformation is the new war. And so culture and the problem is with the philosophy, and that starts with the CEO. So Zuckerberg, you got to go. All right, join me on my next all inclusive three day two night faith based CEO cruise. It's February fifteenth through the seventeenth. Uh, I hope you'll join me. We're leaving out of West Palm Beach. Uh, I was on the phone today with uh, with a former CEO of a large company. He's done some incredible things. He's coming. He's bringing some other CEOs. Uh, and Lowe, obviously my partner uh, in that, and of Robertson Lowe. And uh, he he founded the Get Motivated Success Seminars at six U.S. presidents, Mikhail Gorbachev, Mother Teresa, the Dalai Lama, Larry King, you know, Norman Schwarzkopf. I mean, just, just the who's who. Um, on his stages. And so he's a, it's just fascinating. Uh, love that man. Love spending time with him. And uh, so you'll be able to spend time with us too. And we're not in suits. We are in swimsuits, uh, I guess. And uh, so you just get to, to, and we don't care about the product and the service and the business. We care about you and we want to get to know you. And, uh, and that's why so much business is done because we have to actually get to know one another. Also, uh, I have different investment opportunities uh, that, with Courageous uh, that come up. Uh, we have them start at $25,000. Uh, and then they go up from there based on whether you're looking for promissory notes, whether you're looking for uh, uh, six month type uh, high rates of return or, you know, whatever else. But we have different investments. If you're looking for investments at the $25,000 level or above, some of them are for accredited investors only. Some of them are for non-accredited. You just got 25, 50 grand you want to invest. Then, uh, then, then we can talk, uh, send us an email at office at courageous experience.com. But there are some great options that, uh, that we'd love to share with you uh, because these are companies that I work with. And then, uh, and we get to pass along some of those, uh, investment opportunities to you. So uh, the cruise, you can get more information at ceocruise.com and the investments, you can email office at courageousexperience.com. Also, I will be at Tom Coast Tavern tonight. They're one of my sponsors. Uh, love eating there and uh, they take good care of me and my guests. But I'll be there tonight at six, from 6.30 to 9 p.m. Uh, hopefully no one keeps me out past my bedtime. Like even right now, it's like 
what, 3 a.m. in China. So I'm staying up through the night here to spend time with you. And, uh, and I'll, so it'll be, I'll be very delirious by the time tonight get, uh, comes here. But, uh, but anyway, I'd love to meet you tonight at Tomko's Tavern uh, at 6.30. I'll be taking your calls, growing your businesses, and creating breakthroughs again next Thursday at noon Eastern. Of course, it'll be the week before Christmas. And I want to thank my amazing sponsors again, New York Life, uh, Nick McCarthy. Uh, reach out to him, schedule that call. Win Experiences, W-Y-N Experiences, Tom Coast Tavern, and uh, Achieve Wellness, who my doctor just keeps me. Entrepreneur Radio with America's CEO, Dr. Roland Roberts. We pour time-tested business principles into hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs every week. And we could not do it without your sacrificial giving. If you want to engage Dr. Roberts to speak or work with your organization, connect with us at CourageousRadio.com or at Courageous Media on Facebook.